and the snow is coming down here in the hills of southwest Colorado. Actually, I uh, found an old journal. Found some ramblings from 2014. So I thought I would share that as the uh, snow comes down. And yes, we will get snow later on in the year here in Colorado, much later than other places. So yeah, it has its pluses, it has its challenges, and a book can be written about that. The uh, conversation about the digital detox, and I want to appreciate the, uh, the gold thread email that came in talking about uh, appreciating some of the content lately, more so than normal, uh, just the, the motivation to get focused because it's where I'm at right now. You know, I, I suppose I was motivated last year, but I mean, there's just sometimes a, a shift in the air where some of us might be more aligned than normal with certain thoughts. And we may be trying to get over a number of bad habits at the exact same time. This is actually the longest I think that I've gone without smoking cigarettes. I'm probably five weeks in. So things like that improve. Cardiovascular health, psychological health. I think that smoking cigarettes is a pretty bad thing to do. And I think that when you're doing it at 8,000 feet, you know, it's not just done at sea level, but when you're doing it at 8,000 feet, you're challenging your cardiovascular and your heart health that much more. <laughs> and there's a part of me that does tend to push it to the limit uh, and it's maybe it's not always good to push all things to the limit. I also think that a lifetime of knowledge is almost crystallizing here on the hill. And it's not always easy to deal with some of the feelings that I have. And what I wouldn't necessarily call nightmares, but things that are in the dream state. Uh, to deal with some of that, there's also increased sensitivity. And I talk about this on a regular basis, but I don't always get into the specific details of what that happens to be. But things that could be considered to be telepathic, and that's not always a positive when you're uh, picking up on things that you rather not. And so the internet is a way that we can tap into energies and intelligences that are in some cases beyond this world. And so when we see our own ability to tap into those intelligences, we have to be responsible, right? That we're not tapping into information that's deliberately toxic. So as I actually go through the digital detox, because I've been binge watching the last few days, uh, 80s films and, and content from that era, you know, because it's not all on the negative side. Um, watching stuff and hearing people speak in a particular time space reality, part of us can be taken there from just the, the, the overall production. I mean, the whole package from <clears throat> the acoustic sounds, the music, the voice to the camera itself and it recording things in the room and just the overall production and that time space reality to where the whole production was put together into one file or one tape back then. Now a file, a digital file that may play to us uh, off of a medium like YouTube. And I talked about this in a, in a recent podcast to where some of us could be in a certain state of sensitivity to where we'll be picking up on things that are in that tape that later are shown on that tape. Like, you know, they're talking about how uh, they turn Las Vegas into Disneyland with their crackdown on the mob. And that could be a statement in a documentary made in the 1980s. And I could be thinking about Disneyland right before they literally mention Disneyland and show an image of the castle. The day after that, and I haven't mentioned this yet, uh, there could be something happening in the world, like a prison riot in South Carolina. And of all the days for me to be watching documentaries about prison-like behavior, uh, and also the modern intake process in Multnomah County, which is Portland, Oregon, looking very similar to the inmate uh, processing in Dallas County. They literally have like a waiting section instead of just throwing people into like a drunk tank with a bunch of other uh, dysfunctional people. They have like, at least that's what they're showing on camera. Uh, maybe this is the evolution of jails to where you're not always thrown in with the worst, the worst right away, but maybe an area where there are chairs <laughs> where the handcuffed person could sit down as if they're waiting to get seen by a dentist. And there are ways that jails 
uh, should be reformed. Because so far, they appear to be part of a system that is designed to make people worse than when they went in. And nothing's really changed on that level. And there are ways that they can make great leaps forward. And maybe there are some leaps that are being made forward. But we could also see major steps back when people losing certain freedoms. And I'm not like, you know, a proponent of uh, of nicotine per se, but shouldn't somebody have the freedom uh, to do what they want to do or put what they want to put into their body? Obviously, that's not the case if you have people in prisons being force-fed drugs that are actually bad for them while they're uh, prohibited from having something as simple as a cup of coffee or tea. Not to get too distracted, but this is something that is going to be growing within me as a writer as I connect back with that part of myself. You know, so talking about the prison planet from a more spiritual level, not a viral website level. You know, click here now or the next sensational article about the prison planet. Why are we in the prison planet? And how do we get to a point of being motivated to seek the answers as to how we escape from the prison planet? So I'm going to be coming back to that. The idea of the soul waking up in the prison planet. And the soul waking up in the prison planet might choose to uh, break the codes of the matrix and to not be another typical prisoner, you know, but kind of like an AA meeting, not that this is one, <laughs> you know, but for those that are into that paradigm, there's the understanding of the step one. And even if I may not agree with that, you know, there is the truth of, of reaching a certain understanding before you progress forward within that paradigm. Okay, so within the paradigm, <laughs> or the understanding of the prison planet and evolving beyond it, the first step is to realize that there are prisoners. The first step is to realize that there are people that are showing us prison-like behavior. And then from there, we can go, okay, well, where have we acted like a prisoner in our own world? And how can we evolve beyond that? But at the same time, because people do get hurt, in prisons if they choose to not go along right with certain programs with certain gangs certain forms of rulership certain regimes then the person waking up to the fact that they're a prisoner needs to learn to survive you know and not go along with the lyrics of the opening of guns and roses welcome to the jungle yes it's a jungle but you know we're not necessarily here to perish you know, so we got to keep some of those negative affirmations. You're in the jungle, baby. You're going to die. No, we, we, we may wake up to the fact that we're in the jungle. But we don't have to get out the butt rock hair, thrust our hips back and forth and say, we're going to die. Yeah, let's, let's pop up with another bottle of Jack Daniels. You know, and stuff like that that's really hard on my stomach might as well be prison pruno. I don't care if it was bought at the liquor store. You know, it's something that I wrote in my journal the other day. If they were to open up all the prisons and allow the women to join the men, it would still look like the same society on the so-called outside world. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know exactly what I mean. If they were to have co-ed prisons, right? How would that world really be much different? Would they be watching different TV shows? Hmm? Would their language be upgraded? Or downgraded in a pretty severe way? Or would it be pretty similar to like regular society? When the prisoners are given, a, given the chance to order their commissary, you know, are, are they going to be ordering some of the same things? that are available in today's supermarkets or mainstream candy bars like a Snickers? You know, are they going to be uh, asking for that wheatgrass? Are they going to be demanding large numbers to be fed quinoa instead of GMO oatmeal? And so there's a purpose in people understanding the need to break through the prison psychology, even if they're not even incarcerated. 
You know, there's a reason why they have so many TV shows that have actually glamorized prison behavior, gangs, the mafia. You start looking for documentaries on these things, and from a sociological perspective, I find it to be interesting how YouTube plays a role in making popular things that are actually very, very illegal. You know, we can actually go back and look at the glamorization of the New York City media with regards to John Gotti. The man was a hero. Uh, we can look at the Florida shooter and see the love letters that little girls are sending this deranged young man. But they're saying that they're not um, giving him those letters. But now it's a national story. So now people can whisper to them. But this is, is this really about Nicholas Cruz? Or is it about the, the dark side of this world? The Demiurge Archon Prison Warden. That'll sit there and use that to show other underdeveloped male gamers. Young Americans today. You know, that are already being radicalized on another level. To then report to them, right, that women are into that. Mm hmm. You know, we actually came across some information last year showing the uh, hardcore pornography search results that uh, women are uh, seeking out. Now, we don't really need to go back into the past. Oh, it's just the past. No, it's not where our future is going. Let's just look away from that. And uh, <clears throat> the results are startling and provides a different understanding of what we thought. So the prisoner, the male female prisoner, and notice I differentiate male from man and female from woman. There's a lot of females and males that are not men and women. Okay, their, their real manhood and womanhood has been sawed off. And they're like a male female version of what they could be. Fornicating the next generation of androids. Okay, because they are socially engineering their children as they were socially engineered themselves. And we're heading towards an android reality. You know, so when I watch documentaries about the 80s, like 80s gang documentaries, we can see that we haven't exactly come out of a golden age in some ways. Things were pretty messed up, but you know what? They were a lot more organic. And people still had their problems. This is important for people to understand that think that GMO and the modern world are all the source of our world's problems. You look at some of these previous civilizations and societies, whether we go back a few decades or we go back hundreds of years or we go back thousands of years, and we can still find the same social ills. We can still see the same fallen souls in this prison planet acting like prisoners, both male, both female, but not yet and in all circumstances, fully empowered men and women. Now, even if they look and seemed sexier and more developed, at least depictions of, of mankind in the older world. I said this before, because we're a roid rage society. Much more so than, well, steroids are actually fairly new to our uh, Western civilization. <laughs> so when you actually look back at construction workers, that like built the buildings in New York, they weren't built like Hulk Hogan. You know, they weren't built, even in some cases like Sylvester Stallone, who's like a short guy with muscles. They were built like, uh, you know those old comedy routines, Laurel and Hardy? <laughs> you know, things like that. They, they weren't exactly looking like roid ragers. Uh, and yes, we would have more bigger guys, taller guys, giants, but really... Uh, I just see a lot of guys that are in their 5'5 five, five something, 100 uh, something average pounds. And you can actually look at old school gangsters like Tony Spirillo uh, that Joe Pesci portrayed in the movie Casino. And he was 5'5 five, five at 150 pounds. He wasn't a roid ranger, a roid rager, bigger, faster, stronger. It's just they were from a tougher generation. Uh, people literally had a fight to survive. Uh, to come up, you know, to, to show themselves, to prove themselves. And back in the day, people weren't proving themselves 
by gaming and texting and Facebooking and YouTubing. People were literally fighting in the streets. People were literally going to prison and having to keep their mouth shut, otherwise they'd get whacked. You know, things like that. So they had to come up tougher. It's not so much about glamorizing it, but understanding the, the circumstances that some of these people were facing, some of these criminals, first today. And so the point of that <clears throat> is to highlight this is a fairly new phenomenon for men to use old tools at their disposal to surpass other men without... Uh, other males without being disciplined. So we have a video game addiction. We have a social media addiction. Martial arts has basically taken a backseat to things like the MMA. What is perceived to be the most effective, right? What is perceived to be the most valuable? What is perceived of the moment, right? Takes the focus. What is perceived to be, uh, you know, uh, good food, you know, right? becomes the thing that sells the most due to advertising. Same thing with drink. Be it called an energy drink or something else. So we're being changed as a society to conclude this point by watching documentaries from the past. It takes us back to that place that was less corrupted than this one, but still corrupted, but on a different level but also uh, consuming music from that era. Hollywood movies, even grade B movies from that era, <clears throat> also takes us back for some of us that grew up in that era, especially for those of us that weren't having sex yet in that era, younger folks like myself, or I'm still younger, maybe older to some, but I'm 38 now. People that weren't already involved in going out and such. It was a innocent period in time. You know, full of cartoons and action films and, and superhero plots. Uh, in, in many cases, the decade encapsulated the archetype of the hero, which I've spoken of, versus the archetype of the villain. And I've used uh, examples like professional wrestling and others to talk about, you know, this period in which we went from the period of the hero to the period of the villain, and it being part of a larger social engineering construct, whether that's coming from the government or, or that which controls Hollywood or that which comes from the unseen, which is more where I'm coming from. On a spiritual note, we've been entangling with these unseen forces which have been influencing us through mass media. And the expression of mass media and the, and the vehicles in which it may come from, right? At one point, it was an analog, not a digital, but an analog television set that was featuring more violence than the average person had ever been exposed to in their life. This is before the cell phone. And just boom, from, from nothing to here's a TV set full of programming. And then here we are fast forwarding to the year 2018. And, you know, buzzwords like digital detox or internet addiction, phone addiction, social media addiction. This is all now mainstream. This is all now mainstream. Now, the topic of tumors in the brain as a result of the cell phones isn't a top topic at the moment, although we've been concerned for years. People like myself that have abstained from cell phones due to health reasons. And so the verdict is still out on that. And it may take some time for us to see the results of, of whether there are unnatural growths in the brain or body. And this would include around the vagina or penis for those that like to keep their cell phone in their pocket. They're radiating those lower areas. I mean, you would think the average person would never even consider doing something like that. The very fact they can actually condition people to hold a cell phone uh, around an area that in some cases is vulnerable to cancer. There are full forms of cancer that occur in those lower areas or forms of breast cancer uh, that women seem to be more vulnerable uh, of catching today. Or there are things like testicular cancer. Uh, there, there are things like uh, uh, other forms that, that involve the um, 
uh, the system within the body that processes waste. Colon cancer. See, all these things, all these phantoms, right, that seem to be increasing in our increasingly wireless world. And yet people are still tuning this out. It's as if they're trying to say that they're not really human, that they're above human, that their forms have ascended beyond the traditional human model that is absolutely ultra sensitive to such technologies. Why, why is this new? Why is this a new concept for people to understand? No, I incarnated into the pod civilization is what happened. I myself as an individual, I incarnated into a pod civilization. And somehow I'm speaking into a microphone to you now from off the grid. To be continued. Okay. So we're just getting warmed up here. We're just getting warmed up. But there is no one at all that I can think of that I'm deeply close to that owns that that has a life that centers around the phone itself as a standalone. And there's always a reason why I stood away or stayed away from getting myself also an iPhone and letting that be where I create my YouTube videos. I've always steered away from using the iPhone as a content creator. And there are reasons for that. There are specific reasons for that. And I also have battle scars, which are emotional. I've been called crazy for having these views by Portlanders. Uh, I've had people throw away everything about my message because of my disdain for cell phones. So I have emotional wounding from people that are invested in the cell phone reality uh, throwing stabs at me. Okay, because this is a society that will take jabs at people that are actually trying to help them wake up and steer clear of some of these uh, invasive forms of cancer of the brain, of the vagina, of the breast, of the ass. You know, it, it's all around us. And it's like when you start first seeing the warning signs of what they've done to our societies with social media, why not be concerned about the other things? You know, without a doubt, there's a reason why here off the grid I can wake up really early. You know, this never happened to me in Portland. Well, what was different in Portland? In Portland, I was a city and your city might be the same, full of people with cell phones, full of things called smart meters, full of invisible radio waves uh, of relating to the, the transmission of radio stations. So radio stations, smart meters, cell phones, uh, we can probably add in digital TVs. So, you know, keep in mind, these are, these are separate issues. Uh, digital addiction is an issue. Someone being bombarded with electromagnetic radiation from something they're not even watching, but from a city that they're living in, that is a separate issue. And I'm sure you follow. It is a separate issue when someone is having to process the toxic effects of electromagnetic radiation in their body from an environment full of people that are literally sucking off the tit of that electric grid. You know, we have uh, teenagers now that are saying that their life is nothing without their phone as their parents tried to discipline them, as their parents never saw this coming because their parents never studied or had a concern with the conspiracy or the social engineering. And then, of course, the, the Pee Wee Herman practical joke on society is conspiracy theorists that would become addicted to cell phones, that would become addicted to certain personalities. Um, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't be mean to people that are addicts. But if people want to be healthy and free from addiction, then we need to talk about addiction from the position of including the addictive forms and things in our reality that have drug-like effects on the person. Okay, so the way that we're flooded with dopamine through the social media engagement can over time blow out those receptors 
to where we're having difficulty being happy over simple things anymore. And I'm starting to begin a learning process. And you can go on that process on your own if you have, right? Because I have previous issues with addiction, so I know what addiction is more than the average person that might be living in denial. I also have an interest in the idea of recovery. You know, I also understand that to get to a place of recovery, we may be dealing with some misery that may come from with the withdrawal if we choose to curtail uh, our digital bombardment. And see, myself, speaking to you now in the year 2018, although you may have heard me hundreds of times speaking to you from different perspectives in different places in different years, the current Alex Ansari is seemingly very hardwired towards extreme personal discipline to recover from all things and all people and all places. That's going to turn off some people that don't want to hear that. It's also going to cause people to think about some things in a way that they've never thought about it before. I mean, even I myself recall times and periods in which more internet, <clears throat> more internet access, more broadband, more, more data power, more, 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 more. That was always associated with good. You know, more likes, more shares, more comments, more numbers, more, 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 more. And it actually takes some time to actually see the polarity of that. You know, somebody could want to be bigger, more known on the internet. And then things can happen in the world to actually change that perspective. There could be things that happen in the world, things that we're concerned about, or something like uh, spiritual warfare. And I, for one, am actually glad that I never got too involved with certain people that certain people never saw anything in me or never wanted to have anything to do with me. Because to be too entangled with people, it's one thing to, to get to know someone for a few years or, or whatever. But you don't want to get too embedded with people that are on the wrong side. You know what I mean? And so sometimes we may have a falling out with someone and we may not have uh, liked it. But we may have looked back and went, you know what? I am sure glad that I am not connected with him. Or I am not friends with that dude back in Portland. Or, or whatever. And we may have gone through a withdrawal of being connected with a certain someone. You know, we, we may have had self-image issues. But yet, in the end, when the smoke cleared, we were clear. Because we didn't have their influence around us. You know, sometimes, and I made a video about this, but sometimes the people around us are the people that are the meanest to us. And maybe that's why they like to come around. Because we allow them to, uh, to be dickheads. To act like a frat boy. You know? And sometimes... We may view that person as our only friend. So we may fear speaking our mind to that person that we call a friend without realizing that there's something deeper to the nature of the dynamics of human relationships or men, quote unquote, bonding with each other. It's not actually bonding for a lot of these men. A lot of these men are hardwired to have underlings. Right? They want to play alpha. Everybody around them, though, is going to be put down. And they may actually have, whether it be a genetic, I would say socially engineered is what happened to them. Not genetics, but a social engineering, right? That you're either going to be on top or some other dude's going to be on top. Like get some sort of a bedroom experience. Very homoerotic. But I think on a Freudian deeper level, and I just say that word loosely, more so slang but like a deeper meaning of human psychology behind the actions and why people do what they do, you know, you can place Freudian with something else. And so for a lot of men, they're going through life like that, looking for their underlings, looking for their army, looking for the people they're going to fill them up under the table, 
looking for their yes men. They're not looking for men to be around them. They're going to make them the best that they can be. Let's say it's a CEO or someone who's a, who's a wealthy guy who's able to hire their own employees. They're looking for yes men. They're looking for people to be extensions of themselves in some cases. You can even think about it like the extension of a virus. Ah, must extend. Ah, you know, or someone who's having more kids and they can feed. Ah, must ejaculate. Ah, must create more life. Where does that come from? Do you really need to create more forms of life? Do you really need to have five babies with five mothers? Do you really need that, dude? Because I won't call you sir. I won't call anyone a sir who is just looking for another way to just pull out his penis and have babies upon babies upon babies to expand his empire. This is, this is an internal virus blueprint as far as I'm concerned to expand the empire especially for people that are doing it deliberately with that in mind. You know, there are some people that are on their own, like, oh, yeah, they're expanding the influence of their race. Ah, ah, yes, by, by, by creating more people like them and having like a DNA war. And, ah, ah, I'll, I'll just stop. But there's a part of me that can step back from being a human and look at mammalian human behavior and I just shake my head because there's something about me that's beyond this pitiful form. I've just been thrust back into DNA. I've just been thrust back into the fallen world. Probably to uh, learn the ultimate of ultimate lessons. And that thought is just trailing off at this moment and one in which I'll have to return to. But I have this notebook here that's documenting. See, I've lost all of my journals and I journaled a lot at 14 and 15. I've, I've moved countless times. I was moved around by my parents. They were not a military family. They had some deep issues. Both of my parents. And uh, I've been very uh, unfortunate in uh, periods and times in which I've tried to keep photo albums and diaries and journals. Uh, it seems that all of my previous possessions are gone. So for me to stumble upon these writings from myself in the year 2014, right before coming back to Portland. And during that experience of living in Portland after coming back in my vehicle, what was going on in my consciousness. And I could see that even then I recognized the divine presence in all things. Everything happens for a reason. Sometimes we're not being punished, we're being tested to be the people that we're gonna be tomorrow. And that's often how I view my perceived challenges that I face here. And there are perceived challenges and there are many ways in which I'm still grateful to be here. And I see challenges, I see tests, I see things that make us afraid as part of the natural order and process to evolving to greater levels of perception. You know, I'm in an environment here to where I'm abnormally sensitive to certain things, which is why I'm flipping off the internet. Because these types of synchronicities are increasing at a rate to where the types of potential are great. In this uh, era of time that we're in, there's only so much time. Should it be spent binge watching bad content <laughs> or like cycles, we watch a bunch of stuff and then we uh, step back from some of that input or podcasts. And then uh, we step back and we create on our own or we go do something else or we go hiking. That's how some people create for themselves or read a book. Or they may create a, um, a fantastic meal full of color and nutrition, nutrient dense food, not nutrient dead food, you know, because they're that much tapped into themselves and their own senses. And so when your senses are sharp, when you're sharp, you know, there's a part of you that's alive and there's ways as we age that we can prevent the dumbing down process so i'm going to come back to uh, this notebook passage after i take a little break <laughs> 